My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people want to make friends, I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate, teach, coach. Call me, 1-800-743-CBC, or tweet me at Jim Kramer. When I come out to teach every night, I'm acutely conscious that my enthusiasm for some companies is completely infectious. Buy, 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 buy. People want to own stocks, and they want to own the stocks in the worst way. So with the market taking a breather, Dow dipping 80 points, S&P declining 0.21%, NASDAQ advancing just 0.27% after being up big most of the session. I want to talk about the worst way. Because I see that happening way too often, and we got to stop it. The fact is, this market's had a spectacular run, and that should make you more, not less cautious. I don't know where the top will be, but I do know we're a lot closer to the top than we were in March or April when it felt like the sky was falling. Before I get started, though, I want to thank Twitter. Yes, Twitter for exposing me to the worst ways of buying, trading, and owning stocks. We're all stuck in our own little worlds right now, talking to the same people every day. We had a call for members of the ActionAlertsPlus.com club uh, this afternoon where I answered questions. Most of the club members are people who like the stocks we own for the Chapel Trust, which are rarely speculative. They tend to be household names. The Twitter audio, though, look out. They'll buy anything. And I mean some real garbage. And then immediately push it in my Twitter feed. I see a lot of people making a lot of mistakes. Mistakes that could really hurt you if this tape turns menacing. And it tends to do that periodically. So tonight, tonight I want to tell you what not to do. I'm going to give you the seven deadly sins of investing that I've gleaned from Twitter. First, please stop cheerleading. It won't help. Cheerleading is for football, for heaven's sake. Anyone who comes to my box, my box, pops old chair. Anyone who comes to my box uh, better be wearing eagle green and cheering their darn fool heads off to drown out the other side, even when there's no fans. You want to give your team a morale boost, but stocks aren't football teams. Yet my Twitter feed is full of cheerleaders, Sorrento maniacs who want Sorrento Therapeutics to be the next Novavax, the COVID vaccine play. Some of them just spell it out in capital letters. Give me an S, give me an O, give me a... Are you kidding me? Others, others say, go Sorrento, with those some exclamation points and silly emojis. When you do this stuff, you might think you're boosting the stock by drawing attention to it wrong. If anything, you're actually hurting the stock. Because when short sellers see this kind of cheerleading, they start gunning for you. And that's exactly what's happening right now with Sorrento. Hey, man, the city's dynamite. Listen, we've had Sorrento on the show a few times at lower levels. I told you I'd buy it at 8. told you at 4 it was the first time. And then 8. Then it shot up to 19. And I thought that was insane. Then it got crushed. It's now 13. Still up a lot if you want to ring the register. When you have a huge gain in respect to the stock, please don't cheerlead. How about taking something off the table? Stocks are pieces of paper. They don't deserve your adoration. It's buy low, sell high. Not buy low, cheerlead high. Rather than falling in love with a financial instrument, you know what you need to do? Ring a, ring a register. Hey, here, this is the sound just in case you're so digitized. Take your profits when you have them. Maybe go buy something nice for yourself on Amazon. Yeah, they got a lot of good things on Amazon. Second, would it be so terrible to ask if you actually knew what the company did? Oh, man, it is so easy now to do this, to pull the trigger in this era of zero commissions that people will buy stocks without having the faintest idea how the underlying company makes its money. Sometimes they just like the symbol. So let me make a suggestion. Before you buy something, try to write down what the company does. Give yourself three reasons. Three why you like it beyond it's going up. That way, if it goes down, you'll know whether to buy more or cut your losses. Remember, stocks do go down, and sometimes they go down through no fault of their own. Maybe it's a bad day for the average. Maybe the president tweeted something discouraging. Maybe it's part of a group that's going temporarily out of fashion in the Wall Street fashion show. Hey, don't take it personally. It's the nature of the game. They're not trying to hurt you. Third, all right, we need to talk 
We need to talk about electric vehicles, or also known as EV. Now, I love electric vehicles as, much, vehicles as much as I am. I love them more than you. I think they're the future. I am, in short, a believer. But honestly, only one company has mastered the art of making electric vehicles that anybody likes, and that's Tesla. So stop trying to find the next Tesla when you can just buy Tesla, especially after they're giving you a five-for-one split. All right, so EV stocks, excluding Tesla, shut up. Fourth. Don't make a habit of buying single-digit stocks. I know you want to you want to speculate. I'm a big believer in informed speculation, but stocks don't get to be single digits because management's doing a good job. They get down there because management stinks. Don't get me wrong. I understand the appeal. I wish more executives would split their stocks like Tesla or Apple, make them easier for home gamers to digest. Too high isn't great. More on that later. But too low can be da- generally dangerous. I mean, really. I mean, big institutions typically can't eat or won't buy stocks under five. No CEO wants their stock that low. Often they're weighed down by mass amounts of debt that you can't see. So you shouldn't even think about owning a single digit stock unless you know how to read a balance sheet. It, I'm not being mean, okay? It's not like my kids where I'm being mean. I'm not being mean. Fifth, speaking of too low, penny stocks, including ones from Mobistics, are suckers. I see them all over the place these days, and they're usually pump and dump schemes. Don't fall for it. Listen, in our first decade on the air, I did a study of how many penny stocks actually went on to make it big. All right, how many do you think? Na, 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 na. It's, it's David Faber on Jeopardy. I can only find one. Those are terrible odds, don't you think? You're simply playing a game of three-card Monty, which means you're going to lose. Six, paper games don't count. You don't have a profit until you sell. I sometimes get the sense that many newbies are so thrilled to be in on the action, thrilled to the point that they, they act like it's a war crime, but when they hear something negative about a stonk that they own. I say grow up. Sorrento Therapeutics may not have the winning saliva test. Nikola might not sell as many trucks as you think. Plug power could disappoint again. There's always risk. None of us can predict the future. So please, when you got a monster gain, sell something. Maybe take out your initial investment, let the rest run, so you're playing with the house's money. Just remember, you haven't made a dime until you ka-ching, ka-ching. Finally, seven. Will you stop heckling me on Twitter? It's not a strategy, even when I'm Jimmy Jill. I'm not going to push some stock because you asked me to. Yeah, oh, Jim, please, please, please. No, it didn't work at home with the kids. Don't work with you now. I'm always, well, I actually work with the kids too well sometimes. Anyway, I'm always happy to weigh in when you ask me about something in the lightning round. What, 800, you know? Uh, but I'm not going to re- retweet your post about a stock no matter how much you beg me to do. My goal is not to move your stocks up. I'm here as your investing coach. My job is to find good companies and recommend their stocks when the price is right. Not when some random person badgers me on social media. Look, unlike nearly everyone else in this industry, at least give me this. I am willing to bless speculation. But the bottom line, there's a huge difference between blind speculation and informed speculation. You have to be informed because when this tape eventually turns down and stocks, it is true right now, all they do is go up. But when they eventually turn down, the speculators who go in blind will be blown out faster than that darn snowshoe rabbit trying to escape the big cat. You know, it looks like he always gets away, but he doesn't. I've seen the end, the outtakes. Maybe you get out alive, but more likely you end up as some short seller's lunch. Mm Mm-mm, bad. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.